Generic greetings and welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of science fiction and all its often contradictory glory to you, the viewer. Today, we'll be covering a giant, stompy, remarkably overpowered, and undertuned mech with a penchant for rolling around in the mud. The Stone Rhino may be one of the most clan head things to ever be produced by the smooth brained worshippers of Soupstock Man. This mech sucks for a few reasons we'll get into, but long story short, go into this with the perspective of German World War II wonder weapons and you'll get the feel pretty quick. But before we get into it, if you'd like to support Psy, get our content a day early in a mostly finished state and contribute ideas for future content, then check out our Patreon and buy me a coffee or feed Steve. If space bucks are short, then like, sub, share the video around and all that since every little bit helps. And with that, on to the video. I forgot to introduce my co-host. Say hello, Steve. Hello. You'll also, unfortunately, have to forgive mediocre audio quality today. Steve is louder and more legible than he normally is, but the quality is kind of crap, because while he's had the new microphone for a few days, he plugged it in ten minutes ago and has never once used a microphone before outside of his phone. So there's a bit of a learning curve that we're going to have to go over. Hopefully next week things will be better. Basically an upgrade just so that he's easier to hear, because before, a lot of the time, his laughter and what he was saying was horribly cut off by his terrible phone mic. Now, though, even when he shifts around in his chair or tries to fiddle with the Xbox controller under his desk, which I know when you're doing it, the microphone will pick that up. So, hooray, Steve is more legible than he normally is. I am no longer using Xbox Live to tune into these. So, are you ready for the Stone Rhino? Would you like a picture before we really move on? Of course, certainly. Excellent. Let me let me get you a picture of this absolute chubby boy. We are going to be going over quite a few things, because not only are we going to be covering the Stone Rhino, we're going to be covering some of the variants and where it came from. Because it is a very, very funny story. The Stone Rhino is a middling at best mech that failed to make waves utterly and often failed to do anything at all, but not for the reasons you might think. It's gonna, it's gonna get funnier as we go. We're gonna be covering a clan assault mech with enough firepower to vaporize smaller stompy boys and enough armor to face tank for days. The only downsides? The thing could barely move at the best of time, it had a habit of overheating to the point of melting every time you click the trigger, and was almost never actually used since it was viewed in a reverential, almost holy way by the smooth brain clanners. Actually just a tiger. <laughs> That's, that's why I was saying, compare it to, to German Wonder Weapons, man. This thing is, it looks really intimidating, and on paper it really is, but in real life, man, did it not live up to the hype. <laughs> so, we're going to start with the history of it, because it's funny, and we're actually going to start with a completely different mech. Now, Steve, you ever read any of those engineering horror stories where new technology is just not going to work out, and everyone knows that, but for some reason people keep pushing it and trying to make it work? Yeah, yeah, I know of a few of those, yeah. Yeah, there's a few there's a few high profile examples that we can come up against, but this one for BattleTech starts out very amusingly. And we're actually going to I am going to get you a picture of another mech called the Matar. And this thing brings us back to the good old Amaris coup because there is some hilarity with this guy and what he was trying to do. So here's an image of the Matar. Now, this was built when Kerensky was basically busy shoving his foot as far up Amaris's uh, where the sun don't shine regions as he possibly could. Absolutely stupid. And it was another one of those wonder weapons that Amar tried to make. And we, we did a video on the Rifleman. And remember there was that one version of it that had four rail guns and it could barely move? Yeah, yeah. This is, looks just like a variant of, of that. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> It is not. It is a super heavy mech coming in at 110 tons. At the time it was built, it was the heaviest mech of all time and was basically pushing the very edges of technology. And by that, it, it just doesn't work. This is the Matar. Which is the edges of technology, therefore refuses to work. <laughs> Does nothing. Okay, okay. So I can't remember if you're a history buff or whether you just play War Thunder like me to torture yourself, but the Matar suffered from a chronic case of Porsche Tiger Engine Syndrome. Ah, uh, yes, the good old Tiger P. <laughs> <laughs> 
for the for the audience's information, the, the Tiger P is German tank, terrible engine and transmission. It would randomly burst into flames, and when they were testing it, they had to have a dude sit on the back with a fire extinguisher ready to put the engine out. And that's that's about the quality you can expect. You see, the Matar didn't work properly because it was so goddamn heavy, there was basically nothing that could move this thing around. The leg assemblies, the actuators, the Mayimer muscles, none of them were strong enough. So when the Matar took its first step, the joint actuators and leg assemblies failed and shattered under their weight. This fat lad tried to stand up and broke his legs in the process. It's great. Uh, make sure your technology fails 101. <laughs> Oh, it's fantastic. So the project was a colossal failure and became known as Fat Geng or Amaris's Fall. <laughs> fat, 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 I'm too used to saying Fat Genghis Khan. <laughs> Something that is morbidly hilarious is that this project was a colossal failure, right? Like everything was going wrong. It breaks its legs whenever it tries to walk. Its bones are made of glass and its skin is made of paper. So the bib wearing fatso saw this absolute failure, and despite the fact that he had ordered it and set out most of the design requirements, he had the entire research and development team executed for, and I quote, treasonous incompetence. Like, Jesus, dude, come on. To be fair, I would have too. Oh, well, I mean, smooth brain dictators think alike, so. Oh like, my god. <laughs> When Kerensky finally finished planting his boot firmly in Stefan's nuts, he proceeded to round up all the remaining family and allies of the failed dictator, find the plans and schematics of the Matar being smuggled away, and decided, eh, why not? He just took all of the information about the mech, despite the fact that it was an absolute shit show, and just yoinked it with him on the long march to clan space. And here's where the story of the Stone Rhino actually begins. Ready for a grand tale of how this mech came to be, Steve? Uh, Can you handle the raw, unbridled, manly force of nature that created this thing? I don't know, man. I don't think so. <laughs> it's so clan head, it's not even funny. God. The clans, the clans just did it again. They just straight up copied the design and used clan tech a few hundred years later to make the things work. And it was clan smoke jaguar, the of ones course. that just... The, the worst clan, the stupidest clan, okay? So, initially the design was still hilariously incapable of, like, actually being useful, but at least it could walk now and melt to slag every time it tried to fire for reasons we'll cover later. Progress, but... man, progress. <laughs> <laughs> I can walk now, finally. Thank you, Father. <laughs> My so... legs have been restored slightly. <laughs> <laughs> so... The, the funniest part, right? So Smoke Jaguar made it, right? They, they dug the plans out of storage, whatever. The reason that they did this was one of the most smooth brain reasons I think you could possibly pick. And it's something I mean, so stereotypically clanner. It, it's Smoke Jaguar, so I mean, I didn't really expect anything else. They didn't build this mech because there was a need for a super heavy. They, they didn't build it because they needed, like, an ultra-powerful breakthrough mech or something. They didn't need a mech that could kill other assault mechs. The, the clans by this point had their, their military-industrial complex well in swing, and they were very much capable of answering all problems on the battlefield. It was... Except for logistics. <laughs> hey, Clan Wolf has logistics, and they come up a little bit later for some more plot armor BS, but... One of several does not count. <laughs> <laughs> One out of ten is the exception to the rule, not the rule. The entire reason that they took this shitty base mech was because they wanted to prove that they were the Ubermensch. The clanners have such smooth brains, I'm convinced that they remove them each night to polish them before bed. So, the name for this mech comes from a native inhabitant animal of one of the clan worlds, just like all the names the clanners have. The stone rhino being, like, borderline indestructible. Apparently it can just, like, face tank missiles and lasers and stuff, which is hilarious, but that's why they named it after that, because they were planning on making a very prickly, very strong, very large mech that would be able to basically deal with anything. And the stone rhino's history, however, doesn't end there, but for the most part we'll cover the rest near the end when we get into why the mech is such a failure. So this is, like, history and lore part one. Now, let's move on to its equipment and some stats, shall we? Because it's funny. Firstly, this is still a very fat lad. The, the Matar was so chunky it couldn't even move without needing kneecap replacement surgery, and the Stone Rhino is surprisingly pretty good, sort of. What, it can move three miles an hour? 
Uh, no, it moves surprisingly fast, actually. It moves at 54 kph. Quite speedy. Hey, what's that in American? Uh, excellent question. I don't know. Look it up for yourself, because I can't be bothered. Oh my <laughs> god, man. Alright, get to editing. <laughs> go, go search it up then. Come on. 33. Okay. And a half. 33 miles we'll, per hour? All we'll, right. we'll give it the half. We'll, we'll give it we'll give it the half. It needs it. The stone rhino can actually move fairly quick for its speed, even though it does have relatively bad legs and it's not particularly maneuverable. But the stone rhino, the reason it actually can move this fast is because they whacked a colossal engine into this thing for the time frame. It's powered by a Heavy Force 300 fusion engine. And this is one of the largest engines like ever put into a mech by clan engineers. For the most part, the clans stick around like a 200 rating with like 100 being the lowest and 400 being the highest. So this thing is like 80% of the way through the engine scale in the actual like in-universe lore. It is extremely powerful. This reactor produced so much of a surplus of power that the Stone Rhino actually had several subsystems that are hilariously out of place on such a large mech. First are the Grand Thrust Mark V jump jets, allowing this big boy to thrust its way across the battlefield and compensate for its subpar ability to climb slopes with the use of assault scale jump jets, which was a little bit of an issue because this thing was so heavy and again its legs weren't weren't really that good for the assembly, that it kind of couldn't climb hills. Like, if it came up against a, a gentle hill, there's a good chance it actually would pull, like, a Tiger P and just not be able to do it, or the engine would give out. We really going back to the War Thunder moments. Oh no, I've encountered a two-degree grade. Oh no, I can't do anything. <laughs> Mom, come home. <laughs> 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 oh no, my kryptonite. A slight hill. Whatever will I do? Uh, so in order to solve this problem of not being able to climb hills, they whacked a whole bunch of giant rockets onto the back of it to try to get it to fly. And this did not work very well because the size of the mech meant that the jump jets were forced to either be very weak in order to not like damage it, and it wouldn't really help the mobility, or they would full burn, but generate so much heat to get this thing to move that they might melt the mech's internals and overheat it, like, almost immediately. Because again, you're trying to make something that's a hundred tons fly. Thing has to have actual space shuttle rocket boosters on it to move. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. The Rhino also came with one of the most occasionally accurate targeting systems in the form of the InstaTrack brand version 8A, which is a really good name. I feel like I should explain that as well. So most targeting systems the clans use are very consistent and quite good. However, the Stone Rhino is a very, very old design by the time of 3025 to 3050, which is like the most popular era in Battletech. It's, it's like 200, 300 years old by this point. As such, a lot of the stone rhinos are hundreds of years old and have picked up a lot of quirks over the years as they've been repaired and rebuilt. The mech's targeting system is excellent, but it occasionally overperforms to rather extreme degrees. It occasionally decides not to be excellent? No, 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 the exact opposite, actually. It's, it's consistently good, but it overperforms to extreme degrees randomly for no reason. So there's examples where stone rhino is just chilling out at the edge of a forest and randomly it spots a light mech sprinting through the trees near maximum range and it's like barely even visible and the targeting computer locks on. It's like him, that guy, you see him, that guy, him, yeah, kill him, get him. Somehow manages to lock on to targets that should in no uncertain terms not be locked on. By the Omnissiah, occasionally the machine spirit will decide that guy needs to die. And before we get to the weapons loadout of the Stone Rhino, I also want to quickly mention the chassis name, because it's great. They didn't give it like a like a numerical designation or whatever, like a lot of the Inner Sphere does. Oh no. These are clanners. Having a soup can shaped indent in their skull is considered a beauty mark. True soup stock moment. <laughs> <laughs> the Stone Rhino's chassis is named the Star League Monster, or Monster of the Star League, which is just like... Come on, guys, really? Yeah, I can understand how ugly it is, but... <laughs> okay, 
So let's let's talk about the weapons now. Let's talk about how the stone rhino will feed you your own teeth from the other side of a city. The weapons. Now, normally assault mechs like to carry mostly close and mid-range weapons with a few long-range additions since they like to, well, assault. Yo, no way. I don't believe you. <laughs> In, indeed. And that normally means getting close enough to rub foreheads with the guys you're trying to murder. The Stone Rhino is not like this. It is an assault mech that's entirely built to basically sit in the ass end of nowhere. It is equipped with sci-fi's most nerdgasm-inducing weapons loadout. In each of its arms, it carries the Gigabig Clan Large Pulse Lasers. Those alone would be a spooky amount of weapons, since it can strip armor and melt internals with just a few shots, so you put that on like a medium mech, that's a very spooky medium mech. Those lasers also being able to outright unleg an enemy light mech if you get a good volley, just immediately bisect them at the knees. Just to make it an even battlefield, you know? <laughs> if, if the rhino can't move, neither will you. <laughs> so despite the fact that Taste the Rainbow is the national call to arms of clan mechs everywhere with how many neon colored lasers they mount, the clanners are also very good at one other thing. And that is strapping enough terminal velocity fuck you to their mechs to turn you into a crater. So mounted in its back, let me let me see if I can get you a better image of it, because the one I gave you isn't. So here's what the Stone Rhino's big ass railguns on the back look like. This thing carries around so many weapons of such a huge size. So these weapons are so powerful that the Stone Rhino is capable of coring mechs instantly from kilometers away. You see, the projectiles are moving so fast that the solid slug can punch through their armor, ignore it completely, and poke holes in things that really, really don't like that happening. Like the reactor's containment shielding, or the ammunition bins, which everyone knows what happens when you hit those. Yeah, nothing at all. You know what? Yeah, nothing at all. It only, it only strengthens the other mech. Come on now. Everyone knows this. Another, another, war, another War Thunder moment? Ammunition racks are just extra spaced armor? Fucking hate high tier? That game is bullshit. You didn't have enough explosive filler in your round. Sorry, you did nothing. Didn't have... Didn't ha didn't... Didn't have enough explosive filler in my solid tungsten dart? Okay, sorry. My fault, I guess. <laughs> Detonate half the ammo in the tank and nothing happened. It just disappears. I guess God decided to remove the explosion along with the ammo and my shell. Thanks, Gaijin. Should have been using the APHE. Are there any are there any top tier tanks that even have APHE? Isn't it just all darts? Oh, I know. Um, so at extremely long range, the Stone Rhino can potentially one shot enemy mechs by double tapping them where it hurts most. Hurt, hurts most, and if that doesn't kill them, the amount of damage done by the railguns can make a target easy picking for the large pulse lasers. Overall, this weapon's loadout makes the Stone Rhino a terrifying opponent at long range, as it's capable of putting down withering weapons fire from, like, behind a hill or something, because it probably couldn't climb it. It also comes with a rather funny, customary clan anti-pigeon laser. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Okay, so if you look at the first image, you notice how it's got the two big energy weapons in the arms, right? And it's got the two big kinetic weapons on its back. You notice right underneath the cockpit, yes. it's got that little that little red looking uh, looking laser thing. Is that, is that the pigeon laser? Yep, that's the that's the clan anti oh anti pigeon laser. God. Do you do you know do you know why that's there? Uh -huh. So birds don't fly into the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> It's to kill any birds that fly by because shitting on a clan mech is dishonorable and not allowed. I'm going with the uh, hay cannon of uh, so they avoid the we're going to be in the Hudson moments. <laughs> Whenever they're flying. <laughs> Whenever this thing takes off, it's got to shoot down any birds nearby to make sure it doesn't get immediately sucked into the engine or something. Now that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's basically a long-running community meme because a lot of clan mechs have like this random like flamethrower or machine gun or small laser in like the head slot right next to the cockpit for no reason mm -hmm. and this is this is the perfect example of it being absolutely silly its main weapons are like most effective at over a kilometer away you're like you're, you're, you're trying to fight people at like a kilometer's distance that's where the stone rhino is like relatively effective maybe longer range up to two kilometers if you're just using the uh gauss rifles so that small mm -hmm. laser is only effective within like a hundred meters 
<laughs> you, you have like you, you have 20 or 30 times the range of that small laser and it's there for no reason if someone's gotten so close that that is a weapon you're using you have made a mistake things have gone wrong did you tell me it couldn't just be for uh, any elementals planning sneak attacks there <laughs> uh no Elementals are no. We've been over this. Elementals don't give a shit. Machine guns and small lasers do not. Even even some missiles don't do anything to them. They don't care. Hey man, I I don't know how small that laser is. All right, it's not the size that matters. It's it's the punch behind. Them. Oh, oh, you poor sweet <laughs> summer child. <laughs> 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 only, only the most mature of humor here. You know, you know what's actually a good analogy for how this mech works? Like, most assault mechs are, like, running dual SMG or, like, pump action or something with, with body armor, right? The Stone Rhino mm -hmm. is, like, a dude wearing juggernaut armor standing on top of a hill with an anti-material rifle on each arm. Th this dude can barely move. He's about to die of heat stroke, and it took him all morning to get to that hill. But now that he's there, get ready to have all of your insides become your outsides very quickly. Now that he's there, that is his hill. There are many like it, but that one is his. <laughs> right, right up until someone gets behind him and then he can't fucking turn around in time. It's <laughs> just have to blast off into the atmosphere, you know? That's what he's got. <laughs> He's got those uh, space shuttle rockets on him for. Uh, he can't fly. He can he can jump, but if he jumps a little too far, he's going to melt himself to death before he gets down. So that's debatable. And I think that is a great time to segue into its cooling problems, actually. It has several of them. So the Stone Rhino has 10 double heat sinks. Now that probably means nothing to you, but if it was an inner sphere mech, that's a great amount of weapons for the, for the thing to carry with a great amount of uh, cooling. But for clan weapons, which belch heat like the sun, plus the jump jets, plus the gigabig engines, these things are constantly running hot. Firing its weapons a few times forces it to just sit there and do nothing while it cools down for an afternoon. And the Stone Rhino has issues operating on hot tropical or volcanic worlds because it can't sink heat properly and it just melts. So Stone Rhino pilots need to be very careful about when and how they engage targets because alpha striking, firing all of your weapons at the same time, is a fast track to an emergency shutdown or a very quick evacuation of your cockpit. So when pilots are desperate and they're really just hammering on the trigger as fast as they can, they'll basically destroy their ability to cool down. And that forces the Rhino to basically use one of its weapon systems at a time and reserve the other one for like staggered firing, which... When you're getting mogged by, like, a bunch of dudes trying to kill you, it, you're probably not going to be staggering your shots and well-pacing them. You, you typically don't think about, huh, how much longer do I need to wait before I can shoot this one again? <laughs> it's more of a, uh, it, it's more of a... Oh! 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 <laughs> type <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Is that Waka? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a rip. Oh, I, li I, I, li I like that one. You you have permission to use that one occasionally. Don't overuse it, but that one's funny. That one can come back. <laughs> so there are a few other variants of it, which we'll talk about. So obviously we have the precursor, the Matar, which, you know, broke leg boy stuck on the floor. We have the main stone rhino, but there are a few alternate versions that have cropped up over the years. And then we have the stone rhino too, by a different name, which we'll get into later, a further development on the chassis. First, some notable variants. And the first one we're going to talk about is my personal favorite, which just reeks of desperation to make this thing viable. So, the Stone Rhino Mark V. While the default engine core 300 the base model had was a damn big engine, this one, they upgraded it to a 400 rating extra large fusion engine. This is, if I recall correctly, the biggest engine possible in the Battletech universe. Like, like actually the biggest one that you can put into your mech. And it was capable of boosting the slow 54 kilometer max speed, so like 33 and a half whatever miles, right? To a mine number, yes. an eye-watering, an incredible 64 kph, or like 40 miles per hour. 39.7. Uh, 39. <laughs> it, they, they put the biggest, <clears throat> the biggest engine they possibly could have in this thing, and it barely made a difference. It went from being too slow to do anything to slower than all of its other clan contemporaries. It's great. 
went from too slow to do anything to uh, still too slow to do anything. <laughs> the best part was they had to sacrifice most of the firepower to fit that thing in, and it barely did anything. As a trade-off, like, they didn't have the giant mech-killing weapons in anymore, so what they did was strip them off and give them a shitload of smaller weapons. Four mech-scale shotguns, ginormous shotguns, LBX-5s to be precise on it, and then they put six medium lasers, three in each arm. As far as I'm concerned, this is, like, a terrible design. It's like giving the Abrams 10 30mm cannons on it. Like, yeah, that's a lot of firepower, I guess, but... Will it be able to actually make use of those to do anything significant? We're taking the the, the gal off the uh, warthog, and we're going and giving it some uh, some fifty cals. <laughs> well, surely it will do the same thing. <laughs> Just give the A10 like twenty fifty cals on the wings. It's fine. It's the equivalent is throwing the same weight. Yeah, but it, it's not how that works. <laughs> Uh, it's it's great. That's my personal favorite because it's just silly. It's it's just reeks of desperation as engineers try to fix problems. But next up is the Mark VI, and I I love this one because it just it wouldn't work. Anyone who like understands BattleTech, who's played the games, who's really into it, would look at this and just laugh because this is a really fast way to kill yourself. It it would melt itself into slag immediately, but it's really funny. This bad boy strips all of the weapons and some of the heat sinks, so it's got even worse cooling, and replaces them yeah. with 14 medium pulse lasers. Remember how we said that lasers dump a lot of heat right at the beginning when they fire, like just immediately? Mm -hmm. And remember how I said the more of them there are, the exponentially more heat they generate? Yeah, and then uh, remember how you said they got rid of the heat sinks? <laughs> yeah. Th this version of the stone rhino would vaporize itself. It would fire and the reactor would immediately go critical and the thing would explode from overheat damage. Like, it's just... What reactor? It's, like, uh, and again, this... this. It would fire and it would be just be what reactor? <laughs> what mech? This, uh, there is nothing there. This, this version of the stone rhino alpha strikes all of its weapons and some guy on the other side of a hill is just like, why is there a second sun over there? And again, like this this may not sound stupid, but for anyone that really knows Mech Warrior, hearing 14 pulse lasers may as well be the equivalent of Bitch and Betty declaring a reactor meltdown is imminent. Like the the second you fire those things, you're just you're going to turn into a pressure cooker. And the best part is again, they didn't even improve the cooling. It got a little bit worse. It's just like this is however the Stone Rhino 2. And let me let me get a picture of it. I think it was the... You mean the Stone Rhino 9? <laughs> No. Stop. Yes. Stop. Yes. No. That's how it goes. No. You have eight versions of it, and then you make another one. It's, it's No, nine. it's a different <laughs> mech by technicality. Mm -hmm. This is the Crucible. We don't do technicalities here, sir. <sighs> okay. It is essentially the uh, same chassis of the mech with a few big changes made to the center torso and the mountings for it to try to squeeze a little bit of more performance out of it. It's got the same slow speed as the base model, it's got a lot of the same issues, it's got the same overheating problems, it's got the same jump jets, but what they did was they basically completely switched things around. So like I said, the proper name of this one is the Crucible, and it's an iteration on the Stone Rhino's design built by Clan Wolf, and I said we were going to talk about them, by this point in history, guess what they've become? It involves plot armor. Uh, the, the the invincible ones that don't ever take losses. <laughs> you you are very close. They they have at this point for a while they they win BattleTech. They they have won <laughs> they have won BattleTech. So by this point, and you can laugh at the names by the way, they're pretty stupid. They they are now known at this point in time that they built this mech as the Wolf Empire. Mwah. I, I can smell the plot armor from here. It just it, Clan Wolf is just added again. It smells like weak old sour cream and rotting meat. It's great. The soup stock is strong with these ones. They formed the Wolf Empire. <laughs> Whatever will we do? <laughs> here they come yet again. <laughs> <laughs> yet again. There's a there's a there's a really good reason why people hate Clan Wolf in the lore. There's a, there's a very good reason, and this is why. Because someone was like, yeah, let's just make them the winners of the setting even if only temporarily. It's it's very dumb. So in a stroke of genius, they decided, yes, four Gauss rifle good, having learned nothing from when Amaris tried to do the same thing with his own Wonder Weapon rifleman. 
The Crucible was just as slow and bulky as the original Stone Rhino, but now it had ongoing ammunition problems because Gauss rifles take so much space and weight that they can't really fit much else around. And to top it off, it was so expensive to make that building them was prohibitively expensive, and losing one was grounds for an express ticket to God for whoever was responsible. It also still has the anti-pigeon laser, just in case you were wondering. Most important part. And now, finally, we can talk a little bit at the end, why was this mech so bad? And it comes to our favorite of topics, logistics! Take a guess. Hey. Take a take a guess with everything we've covered. What what really put the nail in the coffin for this and led to its underperformance? Uh, you see, they had to move it. <laughs> yes, but not really. So these mechs were ungodly expensive. The the original Stone Rhino run was only a few dozen, maybe a few hundred mechs at most, and as such ended up being spread far and thin across clan space. They also didn't survive very often, since once they showed up, everyone went, oh shit, kill it. So their numbers dwindled quickly after those initial runs. Even funnier, in my opinion, is that when they were seen on the battlefields, clanners would constantly, and I mean constantly, run up in the middle of a battle and just decide to be honorable morons and issue trials of ownership, or like whatever, Basically, fight me, and if I win, I get your stuff. So they had to worry about these psychos running up to them in the middle of a fight and then binding them into an honor duel to take their mech. The Stone Rhino is literally that stupid potion or elixir that like everyone leaves in the bottom of their, their RPG character's inventory because maybe it would be good to use it now, but maybe it'll be more useful later, and before you know it, the potion is still there and the game is over. That's, that's literally what the uh, Stone yes. Rhino is. That's, that's exactly how it's treated. I have my hidden trap card that so simply just never be used. <laughs> the the greatest part of, of human psychology, don't use the valuable thing, it might be useful later. Right? Exactly. <laughs> it might be useful later. Write that on my tombstone. I want that written on my headstone when I die. <laughs> and I think the worst part about it is they're deployed in arguably like the worst possible way for any weapons which is they're either only deployed when things are so good that it's it's already a guaranteed victory there's no point in deploying it it's a stomp and the reason that for that is because they don't want to lose it so they only deploy it when they're going to win or in the absolute worst of scenarios where it's guaranteed they're going to lose because there's overwhelming odds. So this mech only ever finds itself deployed in battles that are already completely decided. It almost never actually makes a difference on the battlefield. It is the saddest kind of weapon, built with no purpose and left to just rot in the hangar where when everyone realized that it just can't do anything. Also, its feet look stupid. Insert, what are those, meme somewhere in the background. <laughs> also, its feet just look stupid. That's my final point of this video. Sorry. <laughs> that is, that's the final point, we're done. Oh my god. <laughs> so, that is, uh, that's functionally the end of the video. Anything else to add on the Rhino before we do, do the outro? Oh! 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 <laughs> 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 that is all. <laughs> I would. Uh, that that one gets approval. That gets to go in the bank. Maybe maybe if you use others in really funny ways later on, I will be willing to let you use the soundboard more. But for now, that's it. So with that having, I'm not gonna use soundboard unless it fits. Come on now. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You're still on a tight leash. So with that, I'm gonna move on to the the patron thanks and shout out. Oh, David Gabe. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every time. Okay, so to our patrons, thank you to David Gabe, the original, Augie, 11 Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, the other one, Silencer, and Vox Apollyon. Oh, wait a minute, we have a new one as well, Rugard190. Nice! Let's go, patrons! Feeding Steve so he can show up. And we got, uh, we got the new microphone. We're probably, we're probably going to upgrade that in the future at some point, but for now, Steve is loud. This is your stopgap measure. Yeah, he's he's large and in charge, and we can actually hear all the things he's doing, including when he tries to hide being sneaky with his, uh, his keyboard and stuff in the background. And with that, hey, and with that, the video is functionally over. We're total recording at a cool 50 minutes, which is pretty good for us, I think. And uh, yeah, 
guess what uh, guess what next week's topic is we're doing another mech it's gonna be a fun one well, what is it uh, it is a mech designed to melee things it's gonna run up it's gonna hit you with a weapon it's got a big melee weapon as well which is hilarious it's like one of the one of the... Oh, oh, Jesus oh. Christ stop Stop! No, it's not. It's too much. It's too much. Okay, that's it. The video's over. Cutting off. I'm just cut it.